So now what I'd like to do is talk about enzyme inhibition and the effects on uh, the Michaelis-Mitten constants such as the Vmax and Km. What we have here in this picture is uh, the three uh, main different types of inhibitors. So to explain them briefly, this would be the substrate binding to the enzyme and typically this would be um, either cleaved into two different products or it would be the conformation would be changed, it would transfer a functional group from one place to another uh, or any number of things that this enzyme could do to the substrate. Um, over here, however, we have an inhibitor. So, for example, if the substrate acts on, or if the enzyme acts on the top part of the substrate, um, and it just uses the bottom part as binding, well, if you created a molecule that didn't have this top part, then it could bind there, and the enzyme couldn't do anything to it. So, it would be a competitive inhibitor, and it's competitive because it's competing for the same binding site. So the substrate wants to get here and the inhibitor wants to get here, so they're competing. And the, the higher the concentration is going to be the winner of the competition. So if you have a whole lot of enzyme, like an infinite amount of, of substrate, it's going to be an infinite higher probability of binding to the active site. And so you can, uh, you can basically overcome competitive inhibitors by increasing the substrate concentration. Now, the next one is the non-competitive inhibitor. Now, I'd like to show you this inhibitor is binding to a place other than the active site. Uh, and also with an uncompetitive inhibitor, same thing. So these are called allosteric inhibitors. Allosteric allo is the Greek word that means other, so it's binding to another place on the enzyme other than the active site. There are also allosteric competitive inhibitors. They're a little bit... Um, they're a little bit, quite a bit less common, so we're not going to really talk about those. But uh, these uh, allosteric inhibitors tend to be either non-competitive or uncompetitive inhibitors. Um, so with the non-competitive inhibitor, it can either bind, it can either bind to the enzyme alone, or it could bind with to the enzyme substrate complex and make the inhibitor enzyme substrate complex, just like you see here in the picture. And so if they, if they, if it binds to each equally, if it can bind to the enzyme and the enzyme, uh, enzyme substrate complex equally well, then it's called a pure non-competitive inhibitor. If it binds to one or the other better, so if it binds to say the enzyme by itself better, or if it binds to the enzyme substrate complex better, then it would be called a mixed non-competitive inhibitor. Finally, with the uncompetitive inhibitor, it is such that it can only bind to the enzyme substrate complex. It cannot bind to the enzyme by itself, so it does not have any affinity for just the enzyme. So this example shows where if you have um, the enzyme bound to the, the substrate, there becomes a little notch where the uncompetitive inhibitor is then able to bind. So you'll notice that with a a pure non-competitive inhibitor and with an uncompetitive inhibitor, the ability of the substrate to bind to the enzyme uh, is not changed. So the substrate is always able to bind to the enzyme and then come back off with these two types of inhibitors. Uh, uh, so that's not changed at all. And that's important for understanding the um, how Km and Vmax are changed. So the first thing we're going to look at is the competitive inhibitor. So the competitive inhibitor. And what, what I want to point out here is that, um, just like we said before, they're both trying to get to this site, the substrate and the inhibitor. And when the concentrations are equal, the, the inhibitor has an equal chance of binding to the enzyme. So in that case, you have inhibitor plus enzyme yields inhibitor enzyme complex. And this is a reversible reaction. So you have a, basically a K3 and a K3, K minus 3. So let me actually rewrite those because these are supposed to be lowercase k's. K3, K minus 3. And then the next thing you'll notice is whenever the substrate concentration is increased drastically, uh, the, the inhibitor has a much less chance of binding to the enzyme. And so whenever you increase the substrate concentration, 
towards infinity or to the point where the inhibitor is irrelevant, then you will actually still get to the same V max. The velocity of the, the max velocity of the enzyme can still be achieved. And you can saturate the entire enzyme, the E total, with enzyme substrate complex. However, the ability to bind, so the V max is not changed, but the ability to bind at certain concentrations is changed. And the ability to bind is represented by the Michaelis constant. The Michaelis constant shows the relative ability of the enzyme to bind to the to the substrate. So because it's the K minus 1 plus K2 over K1, K1 is the rate of enzyme formation, and K minus 1 over K2 is the rate of the enzyme substrate disappearance. So if it disappears if this number is high and this number is low you get a very high number it means that binding goes down less binding so minus on binding if this number is high and this number is low then it means you increase your ability to bind and so the binding ability is represented directly by Km. If you start altering the binding ability of the ends of the substrate by in, uh, adding inhibitor, it'll adjust the Km, or, or what we call the apparent Km. So it's usually called, uh, the, whenever you're using inhibitors, it's called, and that's a capital K, Km apparent, Kmap. Now let's put it all together. This is the um, the double reciprocal plot. So this is... Uh, basically showing us what we've already went over in previous video is we have 1 over V is equal to Km, capital Km over V max times 1 over the substrate concentration plus 1 over V max. So, one over, so we have Y equals MX plus B and what you'll notice here I'm going to point out is that this is without inhibitor right here and this is with inhibitor so what is what is going on we can see that our our y-intercept doesn't change that means 1 over v max doesn't change which means v max doesn't change so that's what we talked about if we add enough substrate we can still achieve v max so the v max doesn't change however we do adjust the binding affinity so down the x-intercept represents 1 over km uh, or negative 1 over Km, and so even though the binding affinity of the enzyme for the substrate doesn't change, it appears to change because we have something that is stopping it from binding, which is the inhibitor. So it's the apparent Km has changed. And you'll notice that um, it actually increases in value. So this is negative, and we're moving towards increasing value. The uh, negative 1 over Km increases, which means that the dissociation constant is higher than the association constant. Now since uh, Vmax doesn't change, but Km does, Km increases, so it's going to increase the slope of the line. So just in summary, on a Linn-Weaver-Burke double reciprocal graph, the, you'll see a change in the x-intercept and you'll see an increase in the slope when in a competitive inhibitor is present. So we're talking about a competitive, competitive inhibitor. Okay, now we're going to very quickly go through how to derive this equation um, for when an inhibitor is present. It, probably you don't need to know it, so the rest of this is just for the interested. So first thing is you have to remember the assumptions for enzyme kinetics. So the assumption is that the change of the enzyme substrate complex doesn't change over time. So the velocity of the formation of enzyme substrate is equal to the velocity of disappearance. If you remember, the velocity of formation is K1 times the enzyme times the substrate, and disappearance is K2 times the enzyme substrate complex plus K minus 1 times the enzy enzyme substrate complex. So this should all be reviewed from previous uh, videos I've done. And so we can, set, we can set VF equal to VD. In other words, we can set uh, K1 times ES equal to K2 down here. And then we can rearrange, factor out the enzyme substrate complex. And what we're trying to do is, in this case, we're trying to solve for the enzyme substrate complex concentration. And so we do that 
uh, right here. And then we can even factor further. So if you'll remember that uh, Km, the Michaelis constant, is equal to K2 plus K minus 1 over K1. So this is the inverse of Km. So we can just substitute 1 over Km right there. And the enzyme substrate complex is equal to the enzyme times the substrate divided by Km. Now this is, this is the important equation to remember uh, because later on we're going to substitute the enzyme substrate concentration for this. We're going to also do that in the next step. We're, we're going to do it again later on. So now we're going to look at the inhibitor. So the inhibitor and the enzyme could form and dissociate. The, the thing is this is simplified because the, inhibitors, uh, the inhibitor enzyme complex can never make a product. So it's slightly simplified equation. So the velocity of formation is equal to K3 times the enzyme times the inhibitor. And the velocity of disappearance, K minus 3 times the inhibitor enzyme complex. So again, velocity of formation and velocity of disappearance are equal. And then we just set these equations equal to each other. And we can solve for the enzyme inhibitor complex uh, by basically just by dividing by K minus 3. Now, if we define Ki... Uh, so we have a Michaelis constant, Km, and we're going to call this the inhibitor constant. If we define that as, so we have the disappearance on top, the formation on the bottom, just like in the Michaelis, disappearance on top, formation on the bottom. It shows how tightly the inhibitor binds, or in the Michaelis constant, it shows how tightly the uh, enzyme, the substrate binds to the enzyme. So basically, we, we uh, Ki is the inverse of this, so we can just divide Ei times Ki, and we have the in, uh, concentration of the inhibitor enzyme complex. Last of all, we, we have a new equation for the total enzyme. So total enzyme is equal to free enzyme plus enzyme substrate complex plus enzyme inhibitor complex. So what we want to do with that is we have concentration of enzyme inhibitor complex, we're going to substitute that, and then the enzyme substrate complex we defined on the, on the uh, last set of equations, we're going to substitute that here, and we're going to come up with another equation. And so the total enzyme is equal to the en enzyme concentration plus E times S over Km plus E times I over Ki. And then what we want to do is we want to solve for the concentration of the enzyme alone. And uh, basically, you just have to um, factor out and do a little bit of uh, division and multiplication. But you have the concentration of the enzyme is equal to uh, the, well, you see the equation. So it's the inhibitor constant, Michaelis constant, the total enzyme, divided by inhibitor times Michaelis, plus inhibitor times substrate, plus Michaelis times inhibitor. And so... Remember, though, we're really interested in the rate of product formation. So product formation is K2 times ES. So our velocity is K2 times ES. Now ES, if you remember, we just used it in a substitution. ES is equal to E times S over KM, so we can replace that right here. And uh, so we get E times S over KM times K2. And then we want to substitute for E. This is what we discovered is equal to E, and so we'll substitute for the enzyme, and we get that uh, the velocity is equal to uh, this equation right here when you substitute for E. Now remember, ET times K2 is the same thing as Vmax. So we're going to replace Vmax with this, and we're going to factor out all of these K KIs. So if we factor out KI from everything, we can actually... Um, so, so basically, if I divide the top by Ki and I divide the bottom by Ki, that's the same as factoring it out, and you'll see that I'll have a fraction under Ki on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace Vmax, and I'm going to factor out Ki, and this is, uh, this is the equation I get. Now, if I rearrange this to put this plus over by Km, and then I can factor out Km, so I'd get 1 plus uh, I over Ki. So... Um, factored out Km, and this is our equation that we derived for the, the, the rate of an inhibitor. So you see that it's very similar to the, the rate for uninhibited, which um, is V equals Vmax times S over Km plus S.
So all we've done is modified km, which is what you would expect because Vmax doesn't change, but km does appear to change in competitive inhibition.